The property here is owned by Daryl Reynolds near Short, Oklahoma. He runs a 100,000 bird operation under four separate barns. I've been doing it 12 years and uh, worked outside the farm and had the land and wanted just to uh, uh, find something to do here for myself. Right. And uh, I sort of fell into this. Looked into the hog industry and then uh, backed up on that and ended up in the poultry den. So one of the things that you've done here is really worked on energy efficiency. Tell me about how you started that. Well, propane went up so high and then uh, it just got to looking like uh, I needed to redo my brooders too, so I just tried to kill two birds with one stone there and sort of beat the the cost of the propane. And of course, then propane went down. So right. So I figure it'll go back up though. Oh, it's a pretty good chance it eventually it'll go back up. One thing you did was put on some new walls here. Uh, yeah. What what all did you end up doing there? Well, I uh, bought those panels. Them's uh, Thermatrue door cutoffs. I bought them out of Stigler. And uh, I just figured the more insulation I got on them walls and uh, seal up this house, the, just the more efficient my houses would be and the less money would be coming out of my pocket. That's right. So you, uh, you had to go in and seal it up. What, where all did you seal? Sealed the top of the stem wall and the freezer board, which is the wall meeting the ceiling there. And then I did the ridge cap. And then I did both gables and uh, uh, part of the end walls. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed the difference? I was pulling with uh, a 48, I was pulling a probably about a 7 static pressure and then when uh, I did all this I put in some new fans and stuff and now I'm pulling a, a 20, 21, varies to house wow. to house. And that static pressure makes a big difference in how comfortable the birds are on the inside. We brought OSU Extension Energy Management Engineer Scott Frazier along to show us why. He started with a little smoke in low static pressure. So tell us what we're seeing right here now that we've got some smoke coming in. What we're, what we're simulating is a leaky house that doesn't have a lot of static pressure. So the smoke is, uh, or the air is not coming in very fast. And because it's colder outside <clears throat> than the warm inside, the air does not go up to the top of the uh, ceiling and scrub off the warm air and bring it down to the bottom it just kind of comes down and lays down on the floor. So why is this bad? What does this mean? Well we want to use the air coming in to mix with the warm air that's at the top of the ceiling to uh, because you've paid for that air through uh, heating the propane or whatnot. So in essence this is just bringing in cold air and it'll move the uh, it'll uh, get the chicks cold which is not what we want and it's not mixing the hot air that you've already paid for. We want it, the air to come in a little bit harder so that it goes up along the roof line, mixes with the warm air that you've paid for, and then comes down to the floor and uh, heats up where the, uh, where the birds are. So by sealing up a, a facility, uh, a barn, better, you're going to be able to control that airflow a lot easier? Your, your static pressure will be higher, and so the velocity coming through these vents will be higher, which means that it'll go up along the top and mix. Anytime the uh, static pressure is low because of a leaky house, because there's all these little leaks around here, static pressure is going to be low and the velocity is going to be very low coming through these vents. So as you bring in air, you tend to make the problem even worse. Right, right. So basically what you want to do is make sure you're uh, getting what you paid for. Exactly. To prove it, we turned on the system's full potential, a static pressure in the low 20s. So this looks like it's really pulling that in this time. Right, <clears throat> and you can see that the outside air is coming along the roof and instead of uh, falling down to the floor and chilling the birds, it's going up to the top. It's mixing with the warm air that's already up at the top and bringing it down about half, about halfway across the building. That's exactly what you want. And it's really dispersing it once it hits that warm air, so it seems like it's getting a nice mix. Right, yeah, you can, there's not a lot of smoke in one little area. You can see the smoke's kind of evenly dispersed. So, so that means that also the heat is evenly dispersed for the, uh, for the birds. Even in the tightest buildings, leaks can and will occur. Okay, go ahead. A problem that can also be checked using smoke and static pressure. Here's just a little bit of smoke coming out. That's not much. Really looking for a, there we go, there's a little bit of a leak. So if we were sealing up this house, we might come back with the, uh, we might take a uh, 
a marker and mark this and then come back with some foam and foam it up a little bit. Frazier says there's a payoff in sealing and insulating these large barns. Owners could expect a savings anywhere from 10 to 20 percent on their heating bill, keeping the heat where it's needed and the animals comfortable and growing. It's an image that's easier to see in infrared. So there, there's not much stratification here. I'm not seeing um, ultra low temperatures on the floor and I'm not seeing 100 degrees. You can tell where the oh, heat oh, of the tube is though. Yeah, you sure can. Now you can see the uh, far wall down there is a little bit cool, so that might uh, be able to have some insulation on it. But in general, if this was a uh, original curtain wall construction, these walls would all be blue, showing uh, temperature, uh, cold, a lot of heat loss. But this kind of demonstrates what he's done by putting up the, uh, the sheet insulation. Owner David Reynolds went one step beyond simply insulating these houses. Uh, now you didn't just uh, seal up your facilities, you also changed the way that you heat those facilities and, and this is part of it, I guess. Right, yeah, I've got uh, put in these uh, biomass furnaces. Uh, they'll burn wood pellets or corn and uh, these are 15 ton bins. They'll hold 15 tons and I got one at each house and they'll uh, automatically feed, so it's, it's not a whole lot of labor. So involved. you're not out here with a shovel trying right. to do it every night? Right. Yeah. Um, so if we look inside, I mean, it, it really just kind of looks like a, a wood-burning stove. Yeah. So you actually get your pellets from outside and it comes in, drops in here, and then uh, this will basically incinerate it. Automatically feeds it. It's got augers, it's got blowers. It blows into some uh, steel pots down here, which it's getting its air and blowing the wood pellets in at the same time. And then it heats up the firebox on the top and pushes it inside. And then it's got a distributor box up in the ceiling that puts it in the house. Yeah, they have big plastic tubes that kind of run. 30 out. inch tubes. Got holes at four and eight o'clock. Distributes the heat and. Uh, I get my birds are 10 days old and the day they come out here they do a pre-brood. And a field man comes out, checks my floors. My floors was at 91 degrees. Wow. Wall to wall. Wall to wall. Yeah. Why would a producer really want to consider something beyond the typical gas type systems that we've been used to seeing? Well, as, as Dr. Payne mentioned, the, the price volatility of fuels is what's really driving uh, agricultural folks um, a little bit batty. Um, it, it's a little bit low right now, relatively speaking, but it'll go back up. Uh, all we need is a hurricane to come up the Gulf and uh, propane, which fall, tends to follow natural gas, the price will uh, skyrocket. Overall, on average, that might not be bad, but it makes it very difficult to uh, to plan anything out beyond a few months, really. Yeah, uh, the renewable aspect of this, the fact we're using a wood, a, a bioenergy uh, system, is, does that make a difference long term as far as price, let, keeping those prices pretty level? Well, um, we would assume that the price of wood will be uh, somewhat more stable than fossil fuels. It may not be if enough people start buying these systems and installing them, but for the time being, the price of wood should be a little more stable. Plus. If we have any kind of uh, carbon legislation come down the road, this is essentially uh, somewhat carbon neutral. And so it might be uh, applicable for carbon credits. Not only are there fuel cost savings and potential environmental benefits, but these 800,000 BTU rocket furnaces are providing Reynolds productivity improvements as well. So this actually provides a drier environment then? Dry heat. Dry heat. So you're not Drier litter, healthier bird. Right. It's affecting your production then too. Sure. And then I don't have to buy any bedding. I've not put any bedding in in a year. So I'm not carrying it all out and putting it on here and, and buying a twelve, fifteen hundred dollar load of rice holes. Right. I can keep that in my pocket. Huh. That's great. What kind of payoff are you looking at on something like this? When they did the numbers on this, the they was looking at five years, but Fuel was also 215 a gallon at that time. So with fuel dropping, it's probably going to stretch it out probably around six years or so. Sure, sure. But well worth it? I think so. We'll find out soon. We'll find out. <laughs>